Hi everybody, this is Jim Egan, head of school, Synapse School with a Friday update. It is October, it is gorgeous outside. We had a super fun assembly to end the day here today. Ask your kids, it was a Flare Friday assembly led by Katie and Stephanie who brought the energy. Oh my gosh, they did. Ask your kids, it was super fun. Um, and uh, we had a great week, but let's get right to it. First things first, annual fun. Thank you parents, thank you board, thank you teachers who have already pledged or given to this most important uh, annual tradition in the fall. Uh, we are ahead of schedule, I would say. Uh, Sarah Hill, let me know. Uh, in terms of uh, amount raised at this point in the year compared to last year, but we have a ways to go. 100% participation is what we're looking for. And so please join all of us uh, who have given already in um, what is a really important um, tradition for our school this time of year, Synapse. Okay, thank you. All right, number two, we had a traffic uh, pedestrian incident uh, with one of our students uh, down uh, in the intersection at Fifth Avenue. Um, I know this is an intersection that parents have sometimes had uh, um, concern about. Uh, everyone was fine, no one was injured. Uh, teachers were there, handled it incredibly well. Uh, thank you parents who actually saw the teachers uh, handle it really well because there were some parents, it was at uh, drop off time. Um, and I also got messages, uh, not only praising our staff, but uh, questioning the that intersection and wondering if there was a way to put in a traffic light or uh, a more permanent crosswalk or any additional um, road furniture or traffic architecture. Long story short, we have been asking for a number of things uh, in my 10 years here from sidewalks to, um, to crosswalks. And um, the County of San Mateo are the ones that have to sign off on that. And it's not uh, a linear decision. There are multiple uh, jurisdictions they have to go through, multiple departments. There are traffic engineers that get involved. It's pretty labor intensive, time intensive, and it's expensive. And it often um, uh, will cause, uh, a, a, will create a cost to the individual or the entity that's asking for the change or who is creating the traffic um, issue or the pedestrian issue. So we have to be very cautious around that. Uh, and, and at the same time, we, we have asked the county and we, can, we, we will continue to do so. But um, that's somewhat out of our control. What is in our control um, are our protocols and our people here. And so on the agenda for Monday, number one on the agenda will be um, an analysis of what happened, what can we do better. We will make some changes. I already know what we need to do, but I wanna run it through the leadership team. I will, re will report back to you next week. Uh, on some of those changes that will um, just further shore up what um, is typically a very safe situation, but, um, but it is you know external to our campus. And so there are variables uh, whenever you take kids out of, um, out of a campus that we have to pay attention to. So we're very serious about it. Thanks for the feedback uh, folks, but putting in uh, anything uh, like architecture, traffic architecture will, will take a lot more than me to do. Okay, uh, two things I really wanna focus on today. Um, one is our, um, how our mission is aligned through our program. Um, so it's sort of uh, just, a, I'm gonna take you through this. I did this with the board the other day, I'll explain. And the other thing I wanna mention is re in regard to what you can do as a parent um, and, the, and how you choosing the environment for your child to be in matters. Okay, first thing, our mission and our program. I was uh, at a board retreat for Synapse uh, this past weekend. We have some new board members uh, on, uh, on our team now. I'm really excited about it. So I ran them through our, our mission, our vision, our values, our models, uh, and our outcomes. And uh, I didn't, attend intend to it to be um, uh, a, a more succinct way of looking at our program but it turned out to be that way and I got a lot of feedback from some of the parents on our board to say wow I didn't I never knew that so let me do it here so what they were uh, were um, saying they never knew was how our assessments and our synapse learning outcomes link back to the mission of change maker and how we choose our change maker 
and um, how the models and our themes sort of all connect. So each year we choose a change maker, right? Because our mission is educating a community of change makers. Before or during, I would say, um, that change maker choosing process, um, we're always aware of the coming year's theme. So that informs it, right? Informs that individual. This year's theme is iteration. We knew that. Then we went and chose that change maker uh, that would really come alive in that uh, that um, that year's theme. That Eugenie Clark, Dr. Eugenie Clark. Um, those two things are linked. Once we have that in place, teachers are then getting right to work on curriculum through our models, primarily our hearts model. These are frameworks, right? This isn't loosey goosey progressive school here. These are actually strong structures. I worked in more traditional schools. We didn't have these structures. I didn't have a structure to build my lessons in, right? I had, um, I didn't have very much leeway in terms of the, the particular content or the books I had to teach or how I had to teach grammar. I was an English teacher, but super loose on the structure of building the lessons, right? I don't think uh, people who, if you don't work in a school, you might not know that. You might think, oh, that school is very rigid and structured, when in fact, it may not be. It's just, just because they're not letting the teachers pick the books, they're really not monitoring how they're teaching the books. We are allowing teachers flexibility on some of the content, but we are um, somewhat demanding on how it is delivered, if that makes any sense. So change maker theme, curriculum is being built in hearts, SEL is being tied in, innovation is being tied in, and then the assessments. We have discrete assessments, uh, a number of tests that are looking at uh, specific content, might be math, might be literacy, but we are also looking at competencies and habits of mind. So those, those tests, those assessments are then given to you in a report, and those are the Synapse learning outcomes. Those learning outcomes have been designed and articulated to um, demonstrate the habits of mind of a change maker. It ties right back to the mission, if that makes sense. Change maker, theme, then you get to work in hearts, tie in SEL, tie in innovation, assess it through discrete content te uh, tests, but also through project-based learning assessments. It's all tied into the reports. They come out as Synapse Learning Outcomes, and those are what we mean by a change maker. I hope that makes sense. Uh, we think it does. It's super unique to our school. It is something that we designed here over many, many years. Uh, our founders were the, uh, the brilliant um, originators of this and that we have iterated on, and um, I'm super proud of it uh, for sure. But it makes us unique. Okay. Now that uh, that is clear, uh, what I was thinking about today walking around campus, particularly after lunch, um, I was just listening and observing. I often do this, I sort of walk through classes, walk here and there. And um, you know, I heard, a, I heard a kid say to a kid, you know, Rochambeau, that's, that's uh, essentially just rock, paper, scissors. And then I saw the, uh, another kid at the assembly be ushered out um, and taken care of when he got a bloody nose. And, and, and a moment later, I saw a, a TKer take her shoes off and put it on her head. And then um, on the way out I, uh, of the assembly, another kid came up to me and said, Jim, run. Um, she's got a magic wand and she's gonna erase your memories. <laughs> and so I see kids all day long, um, it, having uh, deeply creative thoughts and play. Some are, um, you know, having to deal with a bloody nose or a bathroom emergency. Um, and kids and teachers, right, children and adults are working in this very dynamic, organic environment. And then I, when I was thinking about this today, I was also thinking about some of the questions and conversations I get from parents um, who are, are often asking about academics and then they often relate it back to their own experience but they very rarely go back far enough to elementary school they think well when i was in grad school or maybe high school or when i was teaching you know a, a course at a university and the students what i did is not the same thing that's what i kept thinking it is so not the same thing we have kids here 
um, who are uh, just, you know, just dancing around. I, had, I found a kid today getting in her backpack. I said, what are you doing? She was, she's that small. She was getting in her backpack and she's like, I'm pretending I'm in a sleeping bag. So that student is not the same as a graduate level, you know, neurobiology student. <laughs> Very different age and stage. They hopefully are both learning, right? That graduate student's learning. That little girl in the backpack is learning. But uh, they're learning different things and they're learning in different ways. And the kids on our campus are in a deep exploratory mode, right? They're, they're exploring. Their brain hasn't developed yet. Um, the myelination process isn't there yet. It's just very, it's a very different context. And I think context matters. And so I was thinking about our environment and I was reading um, uh, some stuff and reading about this, uh, this doctor, his name is Dr. Alan Shore, he used to be at UCLA. And his, he's, a, he's a psychologist or a former, former professor and psychologist. And he was talking about something called proximal, 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 I think I said it right, proximal separation. Uh, it's when a parent is physically there, but emotionally unavailable because they are too stressed and too distracted. And when this happens, when a parent is emotionally unavailable because they too uh, uh, are, are dealing with something, then kids uh, who have their own um, issues that they're working through as they develop uh, may not get that deep of a connection to that parent. And so what happens, according to Dr. Shores, children are forced then to look to each other as their attachment figures. Think about the desperation of the kids to always connect and the sense of disorientation they feel when they can't connect with their friends by some electronic means. He's talking now about sort of middle schoolers and teenagers primarily. It's not a technology problem, it is an attachment problem. Those kids have been disconnected from the adults in their lives because the adults can't be there for them. They can't be there because they might be too stressed. And um, the good news with this, because um, you can't blame parents, I'm not here to blame parents. Um, I think what parents can do is that they can learn to manage their own stress, right? Uh, that's uh, critically important and it's actionable. Like parents can, anywhere can do that, uh, most parents. And the other thing you can do, and you've heard me talk about this, and you've done it, Synapse parents, is you find the environment where the adults and the kids are available, are EQ, are paying attention to the needs of your child, right? Are skilled, are required, their orientations in that direction. Because um, there's more and more uh, understanding that the environment plays an inc incredibly important role in the child's development. Uh, so that's the good news. If you are feeling stressed, because I feel this sometimes from parents, um, I want uh, you to first focus on you, right? Focus on your well-being because that's going to have a great impact on your child. And that's something you can do. You can and you have agency on that. Uh, and then I want you to remember you made a really good decision and you have your child at Synapse. And there are so many caring adults here and so many fun, funny kids here that are excited to learn all types of things in the academic world, um, but they're also uh, really learning how to um, be vulnerable, be approachable, be a great listener, be a super communicator, which is going to mean at the end of the day, the kids at Synapse are learning how to be great friends and they're gonna have super relationships and as someone who's now a little bit older, that's the name of the game if you want to have a happy life. Okay, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See you next week.